Welcome to this episode of the Circle of Dependent Podcast. In this episode, you're going to hear from Kaylee Mueller Denny. Kaylee is very well known in the in the Charlotte community in terms of pickleball, uh, not just as a player but as a coach. Also, outside of the Charlotte community, uh, for both those things, you don't always see somebody that's a great player and a great coach. But Kaylee's both of those. And listen to this podcast as she mentions her coaching style, and that's the main thing I want to pull out of this is the coaching style. It's a very unique, often lost method of coaching, but a very effective method. So listen in and enjoy. Haley Mueller Denny, thank you so much for being on here with me today. Wow. Thanks, JD, for the opportunity. You know, I used all your names there, but you're becoming quite famous around the pickleball scene. Uh, oh. You know, like Madonna or J. L. I dated myself, Madonna or J. Lo or. You know, any of the other star prints, even. Oh, that's definitely data myself. But we, the word Kaylee is mentioned. We all know who Kaylee is. And uh, so you have a wonderful reputation, certainly in, in pickleball. But those of us get an opportunity to be around you, it's more so than that. So thank you for being on here. I know I embarrassed you out of the gate. But uh, thank you. I'm excited for getting the chance to ask you a few questions. Thanks, JD. We um we met playing pickleball, and there were two things I noticed pretty quick. Now it took us about two years to kind of really get into a conversation with one another. Yeah, you know, I think we're both kind of uh, sl- slow to go there, right? Yeah, you're quieter than I would expect, JD. <laughs> I know, I know, but there's one thing that I noticed. First off, and that was your passion for coaching, even com- somewhat complete strangers like myself. And you do it in a very unique way, which I'll get to in a minute. But it seems to me that coaching pickleball is kind of your your, your talent. Do you see it that way? I would say that coaching pickleball is something that I enjoy so much that time flies and I never even realized where it got away from me. So, I mean, whether or not I'm good at it, I guess that's up to the people that listen to me. But I know that it's something that I enjoy and I like watching the other people succeed. And I do see results from people that actually listen to me. And those that don't, I still am here for and encouraging. Yes. Well, they definitely do in terms of coaching and and your influence. It's a unique style that's not around very often these days. And, And that is... Um, you know, the right kind of coaching that says, I think you can do better than this and I'm going to show you. How, where did you learn that from? Uh, I actually would say I learned it from my mother. Um, you know, that nature versus nurture. My mother always was realistic with me about her expectations for me in the sport and academic world. And there was not that coddling, holding my hand if I didn't perform the way that someone necessarily thought. It was kind of leaned on me like, hey, that's okay, but I expect X, Y, Z because I know you can do X, Y, Z. And being pushed in that supportive way where people believe in me, it's not just that people are telling me I didn't meet those expectations, but that they actually believe that I could. Um, That's kind of that supportive push that I need to really push myself because even though we're pushing ourselves, a lot of time we're battling ourselves or we're okay with the results we're getting and someone needs us to want us to do better. Now, do you set expectations when you first meet somebody? Is if you're going to coach them, like what is it that you want, or do you do that later on? I do it later on. I mean, I kind of ask people, is there something specific that you're looking for? But I kind of want to learn my audience first because not everyone is receptive to the same type of style. So I kind of get to know someone and kind of see because a lot of times people think they want one thing but it's not what they want. So in pickleball, a lot of people think, you know, oh, I really want to learn how to smash my forehand, but they're not really seeing the big picture that, hey, that's not even what you want. What you want is to develop a strategy game and here's how we're going to do it with your forehand. So I don't really ask people their expectations. I ask them, I guess, what they're looking to get out of pickleball. And then I set for them based on my interactions, what that would mean that they need. You're one of the most observant people that I know. Uh, when when you notice something, 
you notice things that most don't see is my point. Like later on, I hear you make a comment. I go, where did she see that? Uh, is that a talent? Is that something that you've learned over time? Um, I would definitely say I learned it over time. And, and honestly, that might come from not actually having the ability and skill set myself to get away without seeing those things. So a really cool thing about pickleball to me, and I mean, this comes in all aspects of life is you may not be as fast or as strong as somebody, but if you apply yourself in the correct strategic way, you can be just as good as somebody, if not better. So being able to observe, you know, they might be better at me than this, but what can I do with what I have to be just as good, if not better? So that's something I definitely had to learn. Um, and unfortunately, it came from not being as as talented as everybody else. Yeah. And hearing you say this, it seems to me that you look for certain skill sets in people. And then you go, OK, you may not be great at these things. I'm repeating back what you said. You may not be great at these things, but in order to win, focus on what you do best. Yeah. That's half absolutely. of the thing, right? That's what you're doing? Absolutely. And I mean noticing other people's weaknesses so even if you know say say dinking isn't my strong suit um even if that's not my strong suit but the team across from me really struggles with cross-court dinking i need to use that it might not be what i'm best at but it's someone else's weakness so i can then neutralize that to make it my strength that day so even though it's not always what i'm best at Pickleball and even life has such strategy involved in it. I mean, the game is literally made so that there's ways around the power, the dinking, the drops. There's just so many rules that let you be strategic. It's chess, not checkers. And I need to help people understand what pieces do they need to move to beat the other side. You mentioned pickleball and life. Yeah. I mean, it's all the above, What's that? It's all the above. It is. So can you think of a life example that's very similar to what you described in pickleball? Using strategy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day I interact with people, right? People have different ways that they like to be approached about situations. And when we have a compromise or we have some sort of conflict, there is no right or wrong way to do something. You may be better at being like a directive person and I may be better kind of observing um, or at you know, I'm an observer, like you mentioned, and you may be more direct. So trying to find those balances of what's going to be the best way to get my message to you. That's the exact same way. It doesn't always work for everybody. You're adjusting your style of life based on the person across from you versus on your necessarily on your talents. You're adjusting on their talents versus your talents. Yeah, just like love language, right? It doesn't matter what my love language is. If I'm trying to appease to you, I need to understand your love language. And I need to give you what you need rather than just giving you what I need. It doesn't work giving you what I like. You know how rare that is, really, in, in people that are going to look at others that way and say, I'm going to adjust based on what's important to you? That's rare. Doesn't feel rare, JD, because I surround myself with people like you. That that's how we live and that's how we operate. <laughs> Which, by the way, to people watching this, this explains a, a lot. Why at the end of this, I'm going to say, "Can you hang on?" Because I'm going to pick your brain about a few things. And uh, you're the type that I actively search for. It's the whole point of this podcast: search for and then ask you what you see and how yep. you approach things. Because it's a rare, it's a rare trait that you have well thank you but you also have it so oh thanks thanks you you i also saw, noticed something else not too long ago oh boy what you got when i like to ask the question of people sometimes we're in the sphere of influence especially business and i'll say what is it that you want this is a two-part question most people when we at when i ask that question what is it that you want they're either either like well i don't know or they do know and they don't want to say. Well, I'm not sure I have the answer to this. So I want to ask you. I have a suspicion. Why is it that we say, what is it that you want, that people are bashful about saying it? Part one. 
I guess I would think that people are bashful because they don't necessarily believe that it's obtainable themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, if there's, I mean, for me, as you know, we've already discussed this. Um, I want to do something where I'm not looking at a clock, something that I'm passionate about, where it's fun, it's enjoyable. I want my job, my future, even if I don't need money, I want to coach pickleball. I love pickleball. Time flies. It's something that I just really enjoy. Um, which I guess some people would be like, oh, to say that I don't want to look at a clock making a living, that doesn't really sound realistic, but it is. So people are embarrassed to say these things that sound like they belong on a, on a Hallmark card. True. I, I remember when I asked a question of you, you, the minute, the way your body language changed, I said, she knows she, she's probably one of 10 people that I can ask a question and she knows. And not only do you know, you seem to have mapped out somewhat of a plan on it. And I just, I mean, what do you say to those people? I just want to encourage people that be comfortable saying, here's what I want. If somebody asks yeah. you the question, say, here's what I want. Yeah, I mean, knowing what you want and having a plan are two different things. And you already know that I I made a future plan for myself that I've kind of put myself in in step to reach. And then you took it one step farther and said, well, why does this have to be future? Why can't you work on getting there right now? So, mm -hmm. I mean, even plan and I know what I want. I was still, you know, down the road. This is how I'd like to be. And you once again took that one step farther and said, why can't you do that right now? And that's, yeah. you're right. I mean, you don't really think about it, right? So whenever we think, what do you want? We always think long term. That's what we've always been conditioned to do. What do you want to be when you grow up? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? X, Y, Z down the road. So that's kind of where we've been conditioned. And if you don't have someone like yourself asking, why can't that be today? We're definitely not asking ourselves, why can't that be today? And honestly, if people do ask themselves that, they're probably going to realize that it could be here a lot sooner than they think if they just start the motion now. Yes. Wow, what a great answer. Well <laughs> Thanks, done. Always a good test taker over here. That was great. All right. So they're going to slide in the pickleball for a minute. Okay. Because you seem to see remember where i said everyone listening or watching i said you you see things pretty quick yeah what do you where do you see pickleball headed what's gonna get what's gonna happen in the future with pickleball wow well if you have a child and you're looking for college scholarship athletic opportunities now is the time to get your child in pickleball i mm -hmm. think pickleball explode it's going to be this whole it's going to make the olympics you can put it in paper right now it will be an olympic sport it will be a collegiate athletic scholarship sport they're building it in the right direction the mlp the ppa it's on the tv it's on espn and getting the tennis professionals involved in it even if it's just you know kind of a a laughable thing for some to watch. It's still growing the interest of pickleball. Tennis courts are getting replaced every day, and we already know what a value tennis has everywhere. It's very well established. It's well connected. Pickleball is on its way. The cool thing is, though, pickleball is people. It doesn't matter if you're 10 years old, if you're 80 years old. Everyone gets to be a part of this awesome community, and that's something that no other sport has. Mm-hmm. And um, as I'm out and about, people will say, I don't know, some people still say, I don't know what it is. I never, I called on somebody the other day right in town here, so I don't know what it is. So somebody's just getting started. What do you, what do you recommend as the first step? An intro. I mean, if you don't have friends, right? The cool thing about pickleball is everyone has a friend that's playing pickleball. And mm -hmm. everyone knows what it is, but... Your next door neighbor always says, hey, I'm going to pickleball. You want to come? Or your family member, someone's talking about pickleball. A lot of times people get started just by going to hit with somebody that they know. And they may not know the rules. They may not have equipment. But you know somebody with equipment. And you know somebody that's going to be just as excited to teach you about pickleball. Because we just, it's a community. We love more people to come. It's not this like stigma like, oh, you're not good enough to play with me. Everyone is so inclusive at pickleball. So if you've ever heard of anyone talk about pickleball, you have someone that can teach you pickleball. If not, there's definitely a pickleball clinic, camp, 
something in your area that's going to do an intro class. There's private instructors everywhere offering these. Some of them are free. Some are not expensive. It's just all about learning pickleball. Go learn the rules. Play the sport and you're going to get addicted before you even know it. I, when I got my first lesson, the comment yeah. was made, do you want to stay social or do you want to get better? And he didn't say that either way. He he didn't mean that. It, pickleball is getting a little yeah. clickish. It happens. I mean, it's, it happens. But his statement was so true. Do you want to stay social or do you want to get better? And you got a choice. I, I think now you can do both. But there is somewhat of a balance, right? There is definitely that balance. Um, obviously, there becomes a level that you reach if you choose to go that route. And that definitely takes drilling and practice. It's not just going to the open plays and the socials and playing with your friends. You do have to decide in some aspect, do I want to be the best that I can be at this? Or am I good just hanging out and playing the sport for fun, not really understanding that strategy aspect? Some people are competitors. You know, they're never going to be okay just going out and hitting a pickleball. They're always going to want to take that one step farther. And absolutely, it, it gets harder to find people that are at your level. But even for me, if I go to open play of all level of recreation, I always pick something to work on myself, right? Me going in and just playing my game isn't fun for myself or anybody else. So I'm going to be a dropper that day. I'm going to be a dinker that day. I'm going to work on all the soft skills that I can, oh, you can never dink enough ever in your whole life. You could dink every day for hours and it's still never going to be enough. So that's do that social thing while working on yourself. You can play with people of all levels, but you need to challenge yourself to work on skills that you don't have to make them better. And in return, you're getting to hang out with new people. You're seeing new players. You're learning new games and new skill sets. And you may be able to come up with something you didn't even know you had because you went to play with people that were social. For those people that are advancing quickly through the sport, what really yeah. what, what sets a lot of people apart is if you're a pretty good player, advanced player, wh whatever term it is that you're progressing upwards, if you can turn back around and you just described it, show up with some beginners, people just yeah. starting, have fun. Don't don't box out. You know, don't box them out because they're just starting. It's almost like mentoring. You know, we all have these people that we mentored in our life or mentored us. The key is to turn right back around and mentor somebody else. And pickleball is a great platform for that. It is. And honestly, when I started getting into coaching, it was because I was helping other people. And just from doing that, I realized that I saw things that I never saw myself. I saw a strategy or aspects of the game that I could explain to someone that I never had taken the time to really realize myself. So as soon as all of that happened, I learned from teaching others myself. We're going to circle back to the beginning about where we started and I ask you a couple more. I want to highlight though what I think this is what you learned from your mom going back to the beginning of what you stated. The people that's had the have had the most impact in my life have been the ones that said, "Look, you can do better." And I can there's only well there's four now <laughs> including you. But prior to you, my entire life, there were three. Yeah. And they had the courage to say, where do you want to go? Or they saw it before I did, which is what you do. And they said, look, if you want to get better, here is what you need to do. I'm going to hold you accountable and I'm going to speak to you in a way that's healthy. But I'm also going to say, look, we talked about this one time before. You need to fix this. And that is a skill set that you have, Kaylee, which is rare. Um, that's a repeat, but if people have the opportunity to engage with you because of that skill set, they need to take it. Thanks, JD. I mean, you know, you can encourage people in a way, and then you kind of give them the guidance. And if they're not listening, um, you know, a little gentle push, like, hey. I already told you this. And now when I'm teaching people, they'll look at me before I have a chance to say anything and say, I know, I know. And I'm like, hey, as long as you can feel it or you recognize it, I'm happy. That's all I need. You know, and if, if you're trying and I can see that you're visually doing what we've talked about, positive reinforcement all the way. I understand that there's like that gap. But, you know, if you just sit there and practice the same 
things and you're not really listening, I hate to say it, but you're wasting your time and you're wasting my time. And I feel like, you know, that little gentle push of, hey, all right, we talked about this friendly once and now I'm just going to stare at you and you already know without anything that you got to fix it up. You did that to me last weekend. You told me to do something at a break. I know you and, didn't listen. Well, yeah, but, but there's one time where when I did get it right, I looked at you first. Like, did you see me? Did you see me? Which reminds me of being 12 again, which is what the sport does for you. If someone... If somebody cares enough about you to take the time to coach you and then you do it right, I, I mean, there's just tendency to go, did you see me? Did you see me? And who these days does not want to be seen, especially by a coach who's trying to help them? And how fun as an adult to have that feeling again. You know, I mean, we grew up with athletics and we thought that was like, you know, high school states was our glory days, but to be able to have something where we get to challenge ourselves again and we get to have, I mean, like you said, there's really no satisfaction, like making a coach proud of you, which is so silly, but it's just another person that you appreciate in your life and being able to make someone proud of you. That's awesome. So finding a coach that actually will be proud of you and will help to push you so that you have those achievements and be a part of them. I mean, it's just something you don't really realize that you want as an adult. But when you have it, it's like, yes, I did that for me and I did that for you. And we got there together. We could end it right here. And that is a beautiful ending. You did not prep for this question, but I want to end it here anyway. This this podcast is not meant for just pickleball. I, I'm hoping that at one point somebody on our team runs and creates a pickleball only podcast. It won't be me. Uh, Weird. But we could help produce it. But if somebody wants to run with it, great. This podcast is meant to say, find out what it is that you want to do. Make some mistakes. Listen to those people that have gone before you that have failed because you might fail nine times before you get the 10th one. Get a supporting group around you. They're going to say, you know, you can do this. You can do this. And um, that's what this podcast is meant to do. So outside of just pickleball, some words of wisdom from Kaylee. No last names or middle because now we know you as Kaylee. What advice would you give anybody that's listening? Oh, just full life advice. I guess earlier to circle back to your beginning intro to really focus, like really sit down and think with yourself about what do you want? and try to go get it. And like you said, that doesn't mean there's a right way or a wrong way to go get it. But try, learn, push yourself. Because if we just stay in this motion of comfort, we're never going to better ourselves. And that's in all aspects of life. So I mean, I never thought in a million years when I was growing up, you said, what do you want to do when you grow up? I never would have said teach pickleball. Pickleball wasn't even a thing when I was growing up. So to just be able to make those changes in life and find your happiness, your happiness isn't lined out. There is going to be swerves and curves and you have to be willing to jump over somewhere that's uncomfortable. If you just live in this comfort bubble, you're never going to find the true happiness that you need. So definitely figure out what it is you want and your wants may change down the road as you get closer to whatever it is. You may realign, you may need to prune and figure out exactly what it is. But I would say that would be the biggest thing is your happiness is there. Go get it. Thank you, Kaylee. If you'll Thank hang you. on for me now, no surprise. The people that have listened to this often, no, not often. I would say about half the time with the guests because we're selective about the guests. I'll say, hang on for me. Hang on after this because we have some stuff to talk about. So we are launching something together, which they'll see out here. And, you know, we don't know yet if it's going to work or not work, but it's sure worth a try on this journey together. So if you'll hang on for me, and thank you for the time. I appreciate it. I know it's going to add a ton of value to those listening and viewing. Thanks, Shady. Thanks, everyone.